Lecture 29, the operator, okay, the curvature, the operator, the definition of the curvature R, X, Y, Z. You see X, Y, Z are vectors which belong to the, the, the tangent vector space. By definition, you can see this is a covariant derivative or covariant derivative of Z. Then I swap X and Y over here, minus covariant derivative of z, now this is x, y, you see the bracket, the Lie bracket, okay, and x, x, i, partial x, i, y, y, j, they are the, the components, okay, over here, and z, z, k, partial of x, k, they are vectors, belong to the tangent vector space. Now, now I will present here a very, very, very crucial, okay, relation which we will use when we derive the covariant, in this case, the curvature of the, in this case, the curvature, the definition, we apply the definition of the curvature. I will, I will use these properties which we already uh, derived, okay, in previous lectures. So, the Lie bracket, you see that the basis, okay, this is partial xc, partial xd, you see this is a second derivative, I can swap, okay, this will be identical to zero. Another important concept is a covariant derivative, you see, of, this is a, the basis, okay, partial xa, with respect to covariant derivative of the basis xb, partial xb. By definition, this is a Christoffel symbol of second kind. This is gamma i, i here is dummy, okay, ab. Okay, that's a very important we will use over there. Now, another important concept is this. When you deal with the, uh, in the scale, the scalar function, the covariant derivative of a scalar function is just the partial derivative. You see, there is no Christoffel symbols when you apply the covariant. Why? Because you see the scalar, it has no direction, okay? That's why the covariant derivative, okay, we can represent as, as a partial derivative with respect to xa. So, now let's apply okay the operator this operator over here 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 you see to only to the basis vectors you see i substitute capital x by partial xa partial xb this is partial xc i just use the definition here i just substitute over there and remember that the Lie bracket okay is zero okay as i pointed out just here so so if apply the definition this leads to this relation over here they see the green one here and the purple one over there now you use you see a product rule okay a product rule over here so I develop, I use the product rule, this leads to, you see, R, this is a basis, okay, the definition applied to the basis vector, I just substitute, okay, quite easy to see it. You see, that's a product rule, and product rule over here, so then I have four terms, four terms. The green one, this leads to two terms, and the purple one, other two terms, which is right over here. Recall that the Christoffel symbols and this Christoffel symbol are scalar functions. You see? So, you see, from here, you see, I can substitute the covariant derivative by the partial derivative because the Christoffel symbols are scalar, scalar functions. You see? That's quite straightforward when you see this over here okay a scalar function okay the covariant derivative can be represented just a partial derivative so that's why 
I'm using this over here. Now, you see I wrote here, you see, covariant derivative, this is a scalar function, is just the partial derivative of this, okay? Also, the purple one, I just write over there. Now again, that's a, a definition of Christoffel symbols of second kind over here and over there. All these terms are just here. Now, now I can see easily, easily, okay, using here this property over here, okay, which I wrote over here, you see, adjust this to come up to lead to the curvature, okay? Apply the definition, okay? I just substitute over there, and this I will call RGCAB, okay? All this term over here. This is a vector, okay? This is partial XD. These are just the components, okay? For free indices here, okay? You see, you can see four free index, okay, over here. L here is a dummy, you see, and L is a dummy. So these are the free index. Four free index on the left-hand side must have four free index on the right-hand side, okay? That's just substitute, there is no problem. So, again, to emphasize, this is a derivation, okay? of Riemann curvature. You start from the definition over here. It's quite easy to see it from here that I substitute now this partial respect to A by X, partial respect XB by, by Y, and C by Z. Okay? So these are the components. Okay? The components. The components apply exactly what we derived over here. See, just to substitute, okay, then the, the components, okay, for free indices, R, D, C, A, B, okay, I just copy from here to here. You see, these are the components. Again, just to emphasize, okay, these are the derivation of the human curvature, it's starting from the definition, okay, we assume that. Then you could compare this with the previous vectors, previous lectures, uh, 28, A, B, C, D, okay, as we derived. So it's a much, much simpler way to lead to the final formula for the curvature, okay, in terms of components. That's it.